In October 1992, South Australia's attention was captured by devastating floods, which swept through the Adelaide Hills and Plains. But as rescues and recoveries were underway, another more sinister story was unfolding in Adelaide's southern suburbs. Please come forward. I just want my daughter back. It's not the same at home. A 12-year-old schoolgirl would vanish from her home, never to be seen again. Paul arrived home at 10 past four in the afternoon and uh, Rihanna wasn't here. On October 7, in the middle of the school holidays, Rihanna Barrow was home alone here on Wakefield Avenue in Morfitt Vale. She'd planned to meet her mother at nearby Norlunga Shopping Centre, but those plans were cancelled when bus drivers called a snap strike. Instead, Rihanna set off on the two kilometre round trip to her local newsagent to buy a Christmas card for her US pen pal. She was seen on the way to the shops at nearby Sheriff's Road about 10.30 in the morning. She got there, bought the card, and two hours later was seen again walking home. When her mother arrived home a few hours later, the front door to the house was locked. The TV was on, there were records on the floor, but Rihanna Barrow was gone. The Christmas card in the newsagent's bag was sitting in the centre of the dining room table here, and um, that's basically the last we've heard of her. Well, it's frightening. I mean, she was an innocent 12-year-old girl. Um, we've seen her walking down the street and that at times with her friends, with her mother. She was just an average 12-year-old girl. Well, I would really like to uh, have a policeman knock on our door tomorrow morning and say that, you know, here's a little girl back in one piece, but um, the reality of that, I think, as everybody knows, is fairly insignificant. This year, that little girl should be celebrating her 40th birthday, but almost three decades on, there's still no trace of her and the repercussions of her disappearance are still being felt in the southern suburbs. Our son's not very keen for us to let our granddaughter walk, not very far, but and she's nine. Um, and I don't know whether that impacted on him at the time. Steve Fallon lived next door to Rihanna Barrow. Couldn't protect her, so yeah, it's just happened. No one saw nothing, heard nothing. Uh, very bizarre. Dean and Leslie Howard had been away on holidays and came home to find their normally quiet suburban street full of action. Ah, oh, it's a bit strange because drove into the street and there was police everywhere, <coughs> and we saw some walking down the street, and then. Eventually, one, two of them come in here and knocked on the door and just asked us a whole heap of questions, which we couldn't answer very well. Two days after Rihanna went missing, the case was declared a major crime. Detective Senior Sergeant Alan Arthur was called in to head the investigation. We don't know what we've got on our plate. I can't uh, guarantee that this is a one-off situation. As soon as he read the preliminary statements, he knew something was wrong, that Rihanna Barrow was in trouble. In a city infamous for its missing children, Alan Arthur had an ominous prediction. Impress upon the community close to where she's disappeared that without their assistance, we can, this case will flounder and it may well become another Beaumont mystery, Adelaide Oval abduction and mystery, which we may never solve. My theory today is uh, that I think her abductor, and I will say killer, lives closer than a lot of people think. And I would suspect that her remains are closer to where she lives than most people think. So you think it was someone in the neighbourhood? That's my feeling. I've felt that way since uh, several weeks of the inquiry and, and even more so when I retired. Police received hundreds of calls from people claiming to have seen Rihanna, but none were ever confirmed. Her father arrived from his home in Queensland to help look for her. 
70 search and rescue members and volunteers combed through the gorge scrub and hills, marking the 10th day since Rihanna Barrow disappeared from her Morford Vale home without a trace. There was no sign of violence in the Wakefield Avenue home, which led detectives to believe Rihanna had gone out again after coming home from the shops or was somehow enticed out. And the unfortunate thing with lots of these cases is that the predator often gets lucky. I probably think that's what happened. The predator was lucky and did his act of abduction uh, without, uh, without fault, uh, without interruption, perhaps choosing a particular part of the street where there was less chance of being seen. If she was taken in the car, she could be anywhere. But I still feel the lack of information indicates to me high probability her remains are in a house nearby and that's where the offender comes from. When a child Rihanna's age goes missing, there's often an assumption that she's probably just with friends and could walk in the door at any moment. Today, police use social media tools like Facebook and Twitter to instantly reach out and harness the public for information or sightings. But in 1992, Senior Sergeant Arthur had to rely on more traditional means. Every day I gave an interview and I was trying to encourage people to, to call. And by, I think, the 25th of November, there were 1,600 calls, and uh, on one day we received 140. Rihanna's best friend was called in to stage reenactments of her last movements. Just come forward, help the police, and maybe they might catch a person or persons that have got Rihanna. And a mannequin was set up at the shopping centre where Rihanna was supposed to have met her mother. There were numerous reports of other children being approached by strange men and valuable hours were lost to false leads and hoaxes. Take those cameras, get them out of here, do it now. Do it now! Major Crime Squad knocked at the door and said there's a report that the uh, young uh, missing girl down south is held hostage in, this, in the uh, group that we're, we live. But there was still no sign of Rihanna. Then, what was thought to be a breakthrough? A report that she'd been seen in a street near her home, High Ray Drive. Police believe she was almost certainly abducted during the 20 minutes between this sighting and when her mother returned home. The same witness who saw Rihanna also noticed a white LH Tirana sedan with a black spoiler either at the rear or the front and black rear louver windows parked in the car park of the Stanvac Kindergarten. It was thought the car had Victorian number plates. Police were inundated with reported sightings, including one from Steve Fallon's housemate. He, was sit he said he was sitting out the, at the front of the deli and saw suspicious people in a Tirana. But they could have just been suspicious people and they you know, might had nothing to do with it. We spent a lot of time looking at white Tiranas and uh, one poor gentleman got reported to the police I can't remember. We had to give him a letter to say, hey, we've checked you out, you know. Uh, but he didn't have registration plates from Victoria. But uh, to my knowledge, that aspect was never cleared up by the time I uh, retired. So you never, you never found the, the car? The car? No. No. The suggestion of interstate plates even sparked theories that Rihanna Barrow may have fallen victim to a Victorian predator dubbed Mr Cruel, who also targeted young girls on school holidays. There, three young girls aged between 9 and 13 were kidnapped from their homes, all without a trace. While two, Sharon Wills and Nicola Linus, were returned to their families within days, Carmen Chan's body was found by police months later. But again, no connection was found. With no solid leads, a $100,000 reward was offered in November 1992, a month after Rihanna Barrow disappeared. In a strange development that same month, the advertiser reported that a man found keys here on High Ray Drive, which could have been those Rihanna had when she was abducted. 
The man called police from a payphone across the road, but said when he returned, the keys were gone. Police said the man came to this location more than a month after the disappearance because his conscience was bothering him. He'd seen a girl matching Rihanna's description near a white Tirana on the afternoon she went missing. As the weeks dragged on with no sign of Rihanna Burrow, the reality of the situation became clear. Within a couple of weeks, I had to be blunt and say, oh, I think she's gone. And, uh, and I said that. It must be pretty hard to deliver that news to the mother of a 12-year-old girl. Oh, it was shocking. How did she take it? Not good. Because there were no positive sightings of Rihanna after she left home for the last time, Alan Arthur thinks she didn't go far. It's my belief that somewhere along Acre Avenue, Wakefield Street, where she lived, in that area, I suspect that where she lies and where the offences were committed. Today, the Rihanna Burrow case remains active. It's in the hands of Operation Persist, a South Australian police initiative which has had success arresting alleged murderers in cold cases. The current reward for information leading to an arrest in the Rihanna Burrow case is $1 million. With no physical evidence, Alan Arthur believes the case will only be solved if a new witness comes forward. It's never too late for someone who's been sitting on some information but just doesn't want to get involved with the police. Uh, you don't have to fear the police if you haven't done anything wrong. So I just would say that anyone that feels they've got something, even now, pick that phone up please. <laughs>